Hey guys, it is the end of 2018, which means we're coming into 2019, meaning that it is time to wrap up the year and look into the future as we normally do at this time of the year. Sometimes you look into the future about March when you've already started the new year, but you kind of gone downhill, so you give up. Then you can never mind. We're going into the best games in 2019, but based, of course, in the historical genre. Now, there is one exception to this. And this will come, and I put it as number 9, because I think it is probably one of the most hyped games, but I'm putting it as number 9 because it's not technically historical. I know people will be annoyed if I put that, like, really far up because, you know, it's based around fantasy, but it's based in, like, medieval fantasy. Oh, you probably guessed what it is. So without further ado, this is my top 10 games for the historical genre coming out in 2019. And, of course, this is just my opinion and the order and one of the ones that I'm most looking forward to. So, enjoy the video. First off we have Skull and Bones, of course Skull and Bones is a Ubisoft game, I feel like it is pretty much off the back of the success of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, it has so many similarities and fortunately I'm not too bothered about this game but I think it does look cool at the same time. Do you know games that you see and think, oh this looks pretty cool? but you don't really have much hype for it. This is Skull and Bones for me. It doesn't seem like it's offering something massively different, and I feel like it is a bit of a just a piggyback of the success of the ship combat in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, but hopefully Ubisoft can do some things in order to change that. The only issue with it is that I've seen is they've taken it into an arcade setting. Of course, that sort of has to be done if you're making it multiplayer, but I feel like the best part about Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was the open world nature of it, being able to sail around doing pretty much anything throughout the world, being able to just anchor your ship in the middle of the ocean and jumping out, going to different islands, that was the incredible part. Sneaking around, finding ships that weren't as powerful as you, and attacking them, and then there's probably someone that's going to come along like a man of war and you're going to have to run away around an island or something. This isn't really going to be something that's all that possible, because it seems so arcadey. But nonetheless, I'm pretty looking forward to this, but I'm not really hyped for it, but I think it's going to be an interesting game, and that's why it's at number 10. But all in all, Skull and Bones is an upcoming action video game developed by Ubisoft Singapore and published by Ubisoft for the release of Windows, PS4, and Xbox One. It's set to be coming out in 2019, but there's no set exact release date at the moment, but of course it does revolve around the piracy and naval warfare. Could this be a successful game? Maybe it's not going to be like Black Flag, but maybe they can adapt it in a way that it is still fun. But that's why I'm sort of looking forward to it, because I think it looks cool, but it's staying at number 10, since I don't have a ton of hope for this game. But let's move on to the more controversial title on this list. Of course, most of you will probably have guessed what this is already, but, you know, the Elder Scrolls series isn't technically historical, since it's based in fantasy, but I think it's safe to say that anyone can admit the influence from historical medieval eras, with the weaponry, with just how life is run, the civilization then, and in the game. Now, we really don't have any information about Elder Scrolls 6 so far, but we do know it's probably, hopefully, going to come out in 2019, but that's us, once again, not even a definite. So that's why this is more of a controversial one that I'm putting on my list, so I put it at 9, even though I think it's safe to say many, many people are really looking forward to it. Although maybe after Fallout 76, maybe the hype has died down for Elder Scrolls 6, because, you know, some of their games has been a complete disaster. And I think they even said that Elder Scrolls 6 and the new one, I can't remember what the new space one, they said that it's going to be, is it the creation engine? I think they said it's going to be on the creation engine, or that's pretty much confirmed, at least for one of these games, which is the same engine they've been using since Morrowind. Which, honestly, I think we have worked out that the engine that Bethesda uses is so outdated, and it's why Fallout 76 was such a disaster, because it could not handle it. But I guess we're just going to have to find out. But that's why I'm putting Elder Scrolls 6 at the number 9 spot. Set to come out probably in 2019, but of course, it's not technically a historical game, since it's a bit further up on the list. But this one is without a doubt a game based in the historical and in other words, the medieval era, which is probably one of my favorite eras to play with. Now, this is Foundation. I've actually done a video on this, so you may be thinking, Resonant, why is this on the list if you've already done a video on it? Surely it's out. Well, I've played an early version of this game, which means that it's not completely done, so all the stuff in that video is not final at all. But what I played, I absolutely loved 
that game. Well, Foundation is a gridless, sprawling medieval city building simulation with a heavy focus on organic development, monument construction, and resource management. It has a nice cartoony feel to it, and I had a lot of fun, like I said, when I played it previously. If you want to go and see some more information and gameplay and just general things, go and check out my video on that. It's quite a fun video and it shows you a lot about the game. But do remember that is an early version of it. The art design in this is beautiful and it is set to release in the quarter one of 2019. So in the next few months, which is exciting, I can't wait to get my hands on it, the full game. Now 2019 seems to be the year for going back in time to the time of ancient Japan. And the first one in our list that joins in with this era is Seriko Shadows Die Twice. This is an upcoming action adventure video game developed by From Software and published by Activision. The game is scheduled for release for Microsoft Windows, PS4, and Xbox One on the 22nd of March, 2019. When you're in this game, you are the one-armed wolf, a disgraced and disfigured warrior rescued from the brink of death, bound to protect a young lord who is in the descent of an ancient bloodline. You become the target of many vicious enemies, including the dangerous Ashina clan. When the young lord is captured, nothing will stop you on the perilous quest to regain your honor, not even death itself. Now, it's set in the 1500s in Shenguku, Japan. I'm I'm really sorry about my Japanese pronunciation. My auntie is Japanese and I still can't pronounce Japanese words because I'm English and we're terrible at pretty much everything. You can unleash an arsenal of deadly prosthetic tools and powerful ninja abilities while you blend stealth, vertical traversal and visceral head-to-head -head combat in bloody confrontation. Now from what I've seen with gameplay and some of the information, it does sound a lot like a Japanese Assassin's Creed game. Maybe, of course, there will be differences, but it does have that influence throughout the game. But I think this is going to be absolutely awesome, and I can't wait to play it. I feel like this is one of those games that's going to be better on consoles than PC, which doesn't happen for many games, but things like this seem like it will fit the sort of console and the controller gameplay a lot better. Now, this is a game that no one's really talked about for a while. It was announced, I think it was at E3 last year, but after that, no one really said anything about it, and I think that's because of the lack of information. This is A Plague Tale Innocence. It's on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and it tells the grim story of two siblings fighting together for survival in the darkest hours of history. The new game from Asobo Studios sends you on an emotional journey through the 14th century France, with gameplay combining adventure, action, and stealth, supported by a compelling story followed by the young America and her little brother Hugo, who face the brutality of a ravaged world as they discover their purpose to expose a dark secret. Now this is binding a lot of stealth and horror elements into this more, I feel like it's going to be a more story driven action adventure game, but it is set during of course the Black Death and I think it's going to be an incredible thing because we haven't really had games like that. The only game that really has looked into that is the Black Death game and we all know how well that went, but that was more of an open world survival. We're taking this into a more story driven experience I think can be incredibly successful. Moving on we have Conqueror's Blade. Now I of course have played Conqueror's Blade once again. I put up a video a few days ago on that, make sure you go and check that out if you want to see some more gameplay of it, but what I showed wasn't the whole game. This is a medieval MMO but taking to the larger scale. If you've ever played a game like Tiger Knight Empire War, it is a very similar, bigger budget version of that. It has similarities to games such as Mountain Blade, but of course set in Asia and that whole war phase. But it doesn't just stay there, because like I said, it's like Tiger Knight, but on a bigger scale. It's taken it from Dark Age Europe and of course Medieval Orient. You can experience these two people coming together and clashing. No, it's not like For Honor. Don't worry, you can lead thousands of troops into bloody siege warfare with loyal Loyal allies at your side. May it be an open battle or a massive siege, you're able to control thousands of troops at the same time. Controlling resources, securing alliances, and developing your economy to ensure a thriving kingdom. Conqueror's Blade has a lot of potential. It looks like one of those fun drop in and play games and doesn't seem like something that's gonna be an incredibly immersive game, but it looks a lot of fun. When I played it, I had a lot of fun and it was pretty cool, you know, the amount of troops on the battlefield controlling them and how big the cities were that you were actually sieging. I was defending in my video, so make sure you go and check that out if you haven't already. At the number four spot, we have Valhall. Now, I did do a video on this, not the gameplay, but just talking about it because it was announced a while ago and 
I'm interested in this game. I think this game could be something incredible. And that is, of course, why I put it at the number four spot, because I'm actually really looking forward to it. This is a Battle Royale mode set in Viking era. Yeah, it, it's, it's quite incredible. I mean, I feel like the Battle Royale era is starting to die down, but this could take it to a whole new area and period that is going to completely overhaul the way you play. Valhall is the place where the best warriors are fighting to the death. Now it's time for the last battle. Ragnarok is coming. As you can see from the gameplay, it's using Viking weaponry, hand-to-hand -hand combat, bows and arrows, and that sort of era and it will create a whole new dynamic to the Battle Royale game mode. But of course, at the same time, Ragnarok is on its way. Trees, buildings are being uprooted. It's crashing towards you. You have to kill each member before it takes you out. I think it's really interesting what they're going to be doing with the Battle Royale sort of gameplay game mode. It's been pretty much overdone at this point, but I think this is the one Battle Royale game that has taken my fancy because I think it's doing something very very different. Now at number 3 is a game that was supposed to come out last year, March of last year, so it is quite delayed at this point. I play this multiple times on the channel and I love the potential this game has got. Think of chivalry but with incredible graphics, better physics and of course delicious animations and decapitation mechanics. This is Mordhau, this is the first person medieval combat simulation and my god is it fun? Playing the alpha of this game is a lot of fun, except from the fact that you're playing against people that have obviously played it way more than I have, which means I keep getting constantly killed and uh, eventually reverting back to playing with bots, but I think Mordhau is going to be so cool. It's expanding upon what Chivalry did at first in bigger ways. They're having more sieges, they're having bigger battles, they're having cavalry in the game, they're having artillery in the game. You're able to have these big scale battles but with the same intense close up one on one combat that you have in a lot of these medieval simulation games. It's taking that personal side where you see your enemies in the eye and you have to be on the ball at all times with quick reactions when you're fighting because it's so such a realistic medieval simulation but at the same time it's taking it out into this massive scale and I think this has a lot of potential and can do a lot of things in 2019 fingers crossed they're gonna release it this year I think that's what they're definitely hoping for but I'll make sure I keep you guys updated because I'm really looking forward to this game now the number two spot I think is an exclusive to PS4 now correct me if I'm wrong but this is Ghost of Toshima the year is 1274 samurai warriors are the legendary defenders of Japan until the fearsome Mongol Empire invades the island of Toshima wrecking havoc and conquering the local population Population. As one of the last surviving samurai, you rise from the ashes to fight back, but honourable tactics won't lead you to victory. You must move beyond your samurai traditions to forge new ways of fighting, the way of the ghost, as you wage an unconventional war for the freedom of Japan. This is focusing a lot more on the stealth side of a game, and I think it looks so good. <laughs> I mean, I was not expecting this game to be at my number two spot, but my god does it look gorgeous. Not just the graphics, but the animations, the way you fight, the skills that you have to use. I have no idea about the gameplay and how good it's going to be, but just from the trailers and the gameplay stuff that we've seen, it looks so beautiful. This is going to be such an immersive game, and yes, it is third person, but I think this is the type of game that needs third person, so you're able to see how gorgeous the art style is in this. I think I, the background gameplay explains everything I need to say about this game. This is Ghost of Tsushima hopefully being released in 2019. And anyone that's been on this channel for a while probably knows what the number one spot is. Uh, I, it's, yeah, it's sort of a cop out at this point because it's been at my number one spot for what? Four years now? <laughs> Be like, it's gonna come out this year, it's gonna come out this year. Yeah, this is Mountain Blade 2 Bandlord. This game is taking a long time to come out. I think it's safe to say, but it is going to be incredible. Expanding on what Warband did in pretty much every way. Bigger battles, more things you can do, fighting alongside lords or having lords fight under you this time. Building your own weapons, fighting in the custom battlefields with not even multiplayer but also single player as well. Having things like replay cameras, map editors, more modding support and of course being able to fight your way through not necessarily with violence but with diplomacy and the economy as well, blocking off the AI's trade points but at the same time they can do the same to you. Having dynasties with your family, once you die your child takes up your mantle and then you then play as them. Mountain Blade 2 Bandlord is going to be 
incredible and I'm so happy that Tails are taking their time with this. Worth a Buy did a great video on this, Mac from Worth a Buy. You can tell he's looking forward to this game and he really explained it perfectly. So many games have come out that have been rushed out and while so many people are so anxious for Banlord and have been complaining, that it's the right thing to do. When this game comes out, I feel like it is going to bring in so many people that haven't really played the Mountain Blade franchises before and show them this new style of game that really Mountain Blade has pioneered and I can't wait for it to come out fingers crossed in 2019 but thank you so much for watching what are your games that you're most looking forward to in 2019 make sure you leave them down in the comments but thank you so much for a great year on youtube and until next year i will see you in the next one